In this video, I'll talk about the air cooling performance in the NKSM2. Review the most popular compatible air cooler for the M2, the Natua NH-D12L Chromax. Also try testing out the glass side panel from NCASE and go over an unofficial cooling mod that could help improve airflow. I've already prepped the case this time around, opting to change it to the level two configuration instead of the level seven I used in my previous video. I wanted a more organic pathway for airflow with top exhaust and rear intake. To achieve this reference style layout, you need to swap the aluminum sidebar on the front panel, then swap the top and bottom panel positions. I pre-ran the gorgeous ultra soft embossed red power supply cables from my DIY just for an extra bit of flair. Here are the measurements on screen for those who are interested, but I will suggest you add 50 millimeters to the CPU cable because mine isn't as long and I have to run it behind the motherboard. I had to move the motherboard standoff to the number two position to give the 4080 Super some extra space to breathe. During my initial review of the M2, I covered its liquid cooling performance with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 240. As you would expect, it was a tight fit, especially with the Fantax T30 fans mounted. Although the liquid cooling performance was good, I can't help but wonder how well the D12L will perform in this situation. On paper, the D12L and the M2 are quite a tasteful pair. While it is a dual tower cooler, they accomplish a compact size, getting down to just 145 millimeters in height, making it a viable option for some larger small form factor cases like the M2. The cooler includes two towering aluminum heat sinks, nickel plated copper cold plate and heat pipes. Build quality is what you'd expect from Noctua, lightweight and sturdy construction, and a semi-gloss black coating. They include the Noctua NF-A1225R fan, R standing for round or rounded. The rounded physique allows it to keep the same cooling as its non-R variant while minimizing overhang. In the box, you get the expected mounting equipment that comes with most consumer boards like LJ1700, AM4, and of course AM5. Luckily, if you're using AM4 or AM5, you'll have the same mounting equipment. This 7mm offset bracket designed to shift the cooler 7mm. As the CCDs on AMD aren't centered under the IHS, this in theory provides 1 to 3 degree improvement on AM5 over the zero offset configuration and up to 1 degree improvement on AM4. Installing this cooler is honestly one of the easiest I've done. On AM5, using the stock motherboard backplate, place down these four gray standoffs. With the arrows on the 7mm offset bracket pointing to the CPU, mount the brackets using the included threaded screws. Apply your thermal paste. Remove the fan to access the spring loaded captive screws near the cold plate. Fasten down the D12L heatsink with the two captive screws at the bottom using the included long Phillips head screwdriver. I strongly recommend installing the fans now because doing so later will be much more difficult. I wanted to help the D12L pull in fresh air directly from the rear of the case. I found a solution to mount the 92mm Noctua NF-A914HS Chromax fan. I had a set of 3D printed pegs, originally designed by Ega to hold the Noctua fan duct on low profile coolers like the Thermorite AXP90, X47 or X53. Fasten the motherboard to the back plate, I wanted to face the thinner heatsink tower toward the rear of the case to maximize clearance for airflow. I know it's upside down, but this time I promise it's intentional. At the top, I have two Noctua 15mm fans for active exhaust. Lastly, I have the glass side panel from Encase. Unfortunately, I can't say too many nice things about it. It's very light and bends very easily. I have concerns that it will shatter if the cables are too thick or too tight on the side panel. In all, the M2 looks amazing. The black and red adds a nice bit of contrast. I also found the build process much easier than the liquid cooling version. I have results for both the vented and glass side panel. For the CPU, we have the Ryzen 9 9900X with PBO disabled and a curve optimizer of negative 13. XMP is also enabled. With a 64 gigabyte DDR5 memory kit clocked at 6400 mega transfers. The RTX 4080 Super Founders Edition is running stock with fans locked at 30% during the Furmark test. I've charted the temperature delta. Ambient temperature is around 22 degrees Celsius, so add 22 to the sensor readout numbers. Here are the noise fan samples at those different RPM intervals.
The first was the Cinevench R24 multi-core test, which I ran at different fan speeds, with the vented panel getting as low as 54 degrees over ambient or 76 on the sensor readout. You can see the sweet spot for cooling is between 1200 and 1500 RPM, highlighted by the noise level staying between 38 and 44 decibels or 4 to 10 decibels over ambient. I do not recommend running this cooler lower than 1000 RPM and you start to see diminishing returns above 1500 RPM. For performance, we see the all-core average somewhat level out around 1000 RPM, again with diminishing returns above 1500 RPM. This slide here shows perfectly why running the Noctua D12L at 500 RPM is not suitable. Maybe if you're running a 65 watt chip, but then you're overpaying for cooling. I added the noise normalized thermal readings from the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 and that kept the 9900X 5 degrees cooler, but that is using two Fantex T30 fans in an exhaust configuration. The vented and glass panels are neck and neck at this point. It is important to clarify that a 1 degree difference can be considered within a margin of error. Running the Firmark 4K 60 minute soak, we see the vented and glass panels are 1 degree apart with a slight edge going to the vented panel. However, we see the Liquid Freezer 3 in the level 7 configuration was substantially warmer, topping out at 91 degrees or 69 degrees over ambient. If you do go with an AIO, I recommend you orient the case in a reference style layout with the GPU at the bottom. You'll see better gaming thermals. I ran Call of Duty Black Ops 6 in 4K with settings set to high with no DLSS or frame generation. Noise levels normalized to 45 decibels with the GPU fan set to 30%. The 9900 is kept quite cool. The vented panel was 4 degrees cooler at 50 degrees or 72 on the sensor readout. The 4080 Super also did pretty well, topping out at 51 degrees on a vented panel and 56 on the glass panel. I wanted to throw in a new test. I converted 135 4K H.265 10-bit 422 files to 4K ProRes 10-bit 422 using software or CPU acceleration inside Adobe Media Encoder. Again, the D12L handled it pretty well, keeping the 9900X at 52 degrees and 53 degrees, or 73 and 74 degrees on the sensor readout. It took around 15 minutes to finish. The 135 files I used is the footage from this video. Usually I use the NVIDIA NVENC hardware acceleration feature. I'm really impressed by the Noctua NHD12L. It managed to give you good performance for power thirsty chips like the 9900X and maybe even the 9950X providing quiet performance, solid build quality, and a super simple installation process. The D12L is $100 on Amazon, and you can get the Nichromax version for $10 cheaper. I do have some very small nitpicks with the cooler. I wish they included an additional fan clip to mount more fans if you have the available clearance. I wish they also included more color options for the vibration pads, but this is really me grasping at straws. The Encase M2 has proven to be a case that can accommodate all price ranges. Although I still believe they should be focusing more on quality control, I'm finding way more scratches and scuffs on the front and rear panel, probably exaggerated by the black color. I strongly recommend going for the reference style layout with the graphics card at the bottom. The vanity of the upside down graphics card wears out and you're left with less than favorable GPU thermals, in my opinion. Overall, I highly recommend this combination. The Noctua NH-D12L and the Encase M2 is a pleasure to build in. What do you think of the Noctua NHD12L? What other compatible coolers would you have chosen instead? And what's your opinion on the Encase M2? Please comment below and thanks again for watching. If you like this type of content, I recommend giving this channel a follow. See you next time.